Well, some people enjoy spending winter outdoors while others just like to cozy up inside. Yeah, whichever group you fall into, the cold season is being a part of being a Wisconsinite. Mary Jo's in downtown Madison with a look into how people have embraced winter over the years. Good morning, Dina and Charlotte. And I know we've all been dealing with these frigid temperatures this past week, but you know, it's just a part of being in Wisconsin and Wisconsinites have been dealing with it for many, many years. But now you can check out a new, a new exhibit that's actually coming to an end here at the Wisconsin Historical Museum, which is where we are. And with me this morning is Leslie Belay. She is a curator of social history here. So Leslie, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. Of course. Okay, so you guys have this wonderful Wisconsin exhibit. Yes. It's ending this weekend. Why should people come out and check it out before it comes to an end? Well, when you think of Wisconsin, the season that you associate with it the most is winter. So we decided to celebrate that. We first wanted to talk about how we endure winter, and, but also talk how we embrace winter. And so that's what the exhibit's about. And I know we're in the midst of winter this week. This, this is the week. enduring part for yes. us. <laughs> we're enduring it right now. Um, but we hope people will still come out and, and see how their ancestors dealt with winter. And you have a lot of really fantastic pieces on display here. Can you talk about the ones that are behind you? These, again, this is still the enduring part that we're yes. looking at. So we're dressing for winter here. Okay. So uh, what the outfit you're seeing right here is a snow suit from the 1930s. That's a snow suit? Yes. And it's it more was- more stylish than the ones we have today. Yes, <laughs> and it was made by the Lakeland Manufacturing Company in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and it was worn by a Sheboygan teenager. So uh, we thought we should show that one off. And the little boy's outfit is, was worn in Madison in the early 1970s. We had his boots with it too, so I thought, oh, I gotta show this off. People <laughs> will probably remember this from their, from their childhood, at least people of my age. <laughs> and then you, of course you have the fur coats here. Yes, we have two fur coats. One is a man's coat. It's a fox with a mink collar from the turn of the century and a 1950s seal and mink. And I think those, those uh, fur mittens, you don't really see those every day, no? No, those are raccoon, and they were worn by a farmer when he was out in the cold driving his, his uh, wagons and sleighs. Oh, wow. Very warm looking. Yes. Well, Leslie, I know we have a few more things here. Can we talk quickly about the snowshoes? I know people still love doing that. Well, here. one of the things about enduring winter is you have to move through it, and we decided to show snowshoes. These are both Native American. These, this is our oldest pair from 1843. Oh, my goodness. So that was pretty awesome to be able to show those off. And it's interesting if you compare the snowshoes to today, the kind of the shape or the... Well, these snowshoes are for going in straight lines and hunting, and these are a little smaller so that you can walk in circles and, you know, go around the village. These are native, okay. both the Native American, they're Ojibwe um, snowshoes. Well, that is so interesting to see here in person. Leslie, thank you so much for being with us here this morning. All right, well, of course, you can check out the wonderful Wisconsin exhibit here at the Historical Museum. It does end Saturday, but all that information is coming up on your screen right there. Dina and Charlotte will check back with you at 615 and check out some of the ways that uh, you can embrace winter and actually have some fun with it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so love it or dread it, winter has arrived, and it's going to be sticking around for a while. Sure is. Mary Jo is in downtown Madison with a look at all the ways people have embraced the season. Good morning, Charlotte and Dita. We're here at the Wisconsin Historical Museum getting a glimpse back into Wisconsin's past and the warm memories that winter can bring for many folks. With me this morning is Leslie Villay. She is the curator of social history here. So thank you for being with us here, Leslie. Thank you for having me. Okay, so we're still talking about how people really endured winter yes. in the past. And we have these here to show it as an example. We had to convert our cars before, right? Well, we can, well this one inventor came up with the idea of how to get a car through the snow and he called this a snowmobile adaptation. It's not the progenitor to the actual snowmobile, but he thought if you took off the front wheels and put skis on, and then put two wheels in the back with these treads, um, you could get through the snow. And they were very popular in Wisconsin with rural doctors and, uh, postal, ca and, and postal carriers. And that's what's in the picture here. So the bottom one on the right, is that the doctor or the post no, office? No, that's the post office. And the one on the top left, they're actually racing. Yes, they're, they're up in the Nida County at Three Lakes racing uh, the snowmobile uh, Model Ts. And we know that the guy on the right won. So that's the one you want to bet your money on? Yes. Okay, then as far as snow removal. 
Snowmobile or snowblowers have been around for a while. They've been around at least since the 1950s. This one is a Bolens snow blow or snow thrower is what they called it. Bolens was made in Port Washington in Wisconsin and Ozaki County. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is kind of neat that we all, we have one that was made in Wisconsin. And then the you know part of enduring winter is moving the snow. Yeah. <laughs> so we also have shovels, including a Jibwe shovel. It's the long, narrow one. Uh, but it's not all about the enduring and the dealing with winter. It's the fun stuff too. So I see that you have quite a uh, variety of ice skates here from over the years. Tell us about so, that. So yes, one of the fun things we do when it's winter time is go ice skating. We have kind of a chronology of ice skates here from the earliest pair we have, which is 1856. And they're kind of fun in that you have nails in the back to put into your, that's how it connects to your shoe. You, oh, that's you how it screw, sticks. You screw them into your shoe and then you uh, uh, use these straps to tie it on. But the earliest ones have these big curl in them to keep you from <laughs> falling. I, well, well, I'm not I, quite sure. I can't even imagine. <laughs> Leslie, thank yes. you so much for being here again and sharing all of this with us. You're welcome. All right, well, of course, you can catch the Winterful Wisconsin exhibit here at the Historical Museum. It does end this Saturday, so you want to make it in right before then. All that information right there on your screen. But Charlotte and Dina will send it back to you. All right, history right there. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Some people enjoy spending winter outdoors while others cozy up indoors. And whichever group you fall into, the cold season is part of being in Wisconsin. Mary Jo is in downtown Madison with more on how people have embraced winter over the years. Good morning, Dina and Charlotte. We're back here at the Wisconsin Historical Museum, and we've made it to my favorite part of the wonderful Wisconsin exhibit. And with me this morning is Leslie Belay. She is a curator of social history. Good morning, and thanks again for sticking around. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so I have to say, this is my favorite piece of the whole thing. Yes. Can you tell us about it? It's a cutter sleigh. It's the smallest sleigh possible, which is that one horse open sleigh that's of song and, <laughs> and jingle and, bells and, and jingle <laughs> bells and all of that. So uh, we do have some jingle bells with them. People may not know that bells were required or necessary because sleighs are so quiet and they could just go anywhere that if you're walking around, you couldn't hear them coming. And oh. there were people knocked over or oh my sometimes goodness. killed by them. So. Uh, the bells tell you, t were a warning that their sleigh was on its way. It's a lot more than just some holiday. Yes, it was spirits. not. It was a safety issue. And so these were moving around Wisconsin over the years. Yes, there are, the, Yes, they were used all over Wisconsin. This is sort of the basic sleigh. Okay. The, that you know, if you're going to have a sleigh, this is what you'll have. I think we need to bring those back. That's okay. just my opinion, but I know we're going back to your favorite part. Yes, we now. are. Okay, so what is this that we're walking well, to? Well, one of the ways we embrace Wisconsin, uh, snow in Wisconsin is by sledding, and we actually have had sled manufacturers in Wisconsin. This, this one on the bottom is a dreadnought. It was made by the Garten Toy Company of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, around 1929-1930, named for the World War I a battleship for some reason. But my favorite piece is the Snow Bronco, which is right behind it. Or, and that's made by Miro of, Mani of Manitowoc, Wisconsin. It's a Snow Bronco. The advertisement says it rides like a Bronco. <laughs> Why you'd want to have a sled that rides like a Bronco, I don't know, except Westerns were really big and they're trying to tie it into that. But it was probably fairly dangerous and it was only made one or two years and didn't last very long. They're, they're kind of hard to find in but it was fun to be able to add one to our collection just for this exhibit. Well, this whole thing has been so interesting to see, like we were talking about how people have endured, but also had fun in winter here in the state, but then all these pieces are from Wisconsin. I would try to make sure that every piece that went, that went in here was used in Wisconsin or made in Wisconsin. Well, it's been definitely interesting and so fun to learn about all of this. Leslie, thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming. Of course. Okay, so the Winterful Wisconsin exhibit, it does end this Saturday, January 10th. It's here at the Wisconsin Historical Museum. That information is on your screen. There is a suggested donation, though. It's $4 for adults, $3 for kids, and $10 for a family. Again, those are suggested donations to enter the museum. But, of course, Charlotte and Dina, it's been a lot of fun being here and learning just about how people over the years have done mm -hmm. winter and... I think there are a couple of things we should bring back. You can like literally spend all day there. Yeah, at that museum. yeah, it is nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mary Jo.